Justin Torelli, J-U-S-T-I-N, last name Torelli, T-I-R-E-L-L-I, and I'm a battalion chief, Arlington County Fire Department. If you can, um, whatever you're comfortable with, if you can take us back to that day, uh, when did you get the call? When did you first learn what was happening? Much like today, the weather was perfect. I mean, it was a bright blue sky. It was a very normal day. Everyone was on their way to work. And uh, we were all instantly stopped in our tracks when we saw what was happening in New York City. And that, uh, although it was a very scary and difficult time for us, we were all just trying to do our job here. And shortly after uh, New York City tragedy started, we had our own tragedy here. And it was, although not our own, it, it felt small at the time, it felt like our own. It didn't take long for us to realize that it was a national event and a national tragedy that occurred in that one moment of time. How long had you been a firefighter for at that point? I had been on the job for about six months. And my first day driving the ladder truck was September 11th, 2001. This is my first day driving on an actual incident. And uh, that that's burned into my memory. What's even, is anything even going through your head as you're driving, not knowing, having an idea of what to expect, but not realizing? Well, being so new to the fire department, I had never even seen the Pentagon before. I didn't know how to get there. Luckily, my captain at the time was about a 28-year veteran who had been on the only other plane crash in Arlington's history, which is the Air Florida crash in the 1980s. Very familiar with the area, got us there. Uh, I was worried. I'm from New York City myself. I have family still living there in New York City. So my mind was in two different places. It was with my family in New York City as well as with the uh, victims here in Arlington. With your mind being everywhere and also having a job to do, I mean, as first responders every day, you have to kind of you do the job, you put everything aside. But on a day like that, how do you even begin, especially as a new firefighter? You have to go back to your training. It's really how, it's as simple as that. We train all the time for all sorts of different events. Most of the things we train on, we never expect to ever use. On that day, we used every bit of our training and then some. So it was uh, something that I, I'm thankful that I had the training I had, but I was, I'm regretful that we had to employ some of those tactics and techniques. How long were you out there fighting the fire? How long was your day? So it was essentially a day and a half event for us. We started off there six or eight hours for the first day. We went back, we got a, a break. There was a, many relief crews that came in afterwards and then we went back uh, because there were subsequent fire watches to do and there was in, in fact an additional fire that occurred the next day and that we had to, to deal with. And this is something where in the immediate aftermath, you're fighting the fire. That's, that's the first thing. But if you can just talk about the aftermath after that, because it, it probably is an end time. Yeah, there was a, a lot of thinking about our future. Where do we go from here? What does this mean for us as a country, as a little community, and then to the, in the world uh, in a greater scheme? How do, we, uh, how do we move to a place of healing, rebuilding, and then strengthening? That was all part of it. And was that the biggest fire you'd seen at that point? Was that the biggest fire you've seen since, or that you've worked since, I should say? Without a question, that was clearly the biggest incident I've ever been a part of. I'll never be part of anything like that again. And was there any part of you as, you know, a young adult who thought, man, maybe I'm in over my head, or man, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I can do this, just knowing the risk. Events like this make you think about how little you are in this big world and how much, uh, how many different things you value, how much you value life, how much you value your family, your friends, your community, and your nation. All of that gets reevaluated when you, when you deal with a large scale tragedy like this. How have you and uh, you know, your, your fellow sisters and brothers who worked that day, how have you been able to move forward since? What keeps you going? Well, we do remembrance events like this every year. Remembrance is important. 
because it's a part of our past. And our, our past tells us, is a, is a roadmap to the future, really. We use this as trainer for, training for our future firefighters. How are they going to respond in the event something like this happens again? We don't want it to, but it's our job to think about that. So we continue to, to train and prepare our newest people for all sorts of events and just like this. And is that kind of the moment of hope looking forward, of, of making sure that we never forget and, and we learn to, to continue to, to be better if we got permission? Yeah, like I said, the training that we do carries us forward. There is physical training, there's mental training. This is part of that. This combines both so that our people can uh, do the job that we were sworn to do. We just make sure that you don't have to worry about this stuff. Let us do that. And to wrap it all up, how important is this ceremony? How important is it for people to remember and pass on what happened that day for the next generation and the generations to come? This is what inspires us to rebuild and rebuild better. I have a five-year-old daughter. She's going to know about this because she might be carrying the torch one day for all of us when, when we're too old or we're, we're gone. It's that future generation that needs to understand the importance of these types of incidents. That's what gets us forward. That's what moves us to the next generation. I'm uh, Robert Icolari, I-C-O-L-A-R-I. I was a special victims detective uh, for Arlington County. I served with Arlington 26 years. I'm, I'm a polygraph examiner for the department. I was running a polygraph that day, and the captain who was in charge of the criminal investigations division came banging on the door. Uh, he told me to uh, put the individual in the waiting room and go downstairs, put my uniform on and go, because the second pl a plane just crashed into the Pentagon. I had seen the first plane crash into the towers, which I thought was an unfortunate accident, but he, he said the second plane crashed into the towers, and then we had the plane crash into the Pentagon. I left, went downstairs, got my patrol vehicle, and I was on 110, about 200 yards from the site of the crash. What's going through your head as you're driving there and as you arrive? It's, it was surreal. Um, I served 21 years in the Marine Corps uh, from Vietnam to Desert Storm. It's kind of one of those things you wonder, how could it happen here? And, uh, and at that point, how long have you been working for the department? You were with the county or the city? I with the county. The, we're all county police. Yeah. And how long had you been working? Was that your job right after getting out the service? Or? It was 2000. So I came on Arlington in 1992. Okay. So and you worked for a little while. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm sure this was unlike anything you've ever seen. It was unlike anything you've all ever seen. Well, unfortunately, seeing some of the things I saw during my tour in the Marine Corps, that was above and beyond. But then, like I said, it was surreal. I mean, I couldn't believe I was standing there watching the uh, tail end of the fuselage of an aircraft embedded in the Pentagon. And when you arrived, what were your duties, so to speak, that day? What was your mission? Well, basically, I was traffic to ensure that no traffic was moving on 110. And then the following days, I was a member of the SWAT team. So our responsibilities were interior security, security of the rubble pile where all the evidence was being taken out of the Pentagon and brought so the officers could sift through it and then also the temporary morgue. We were assigned to the temporary morgue to watch, unfortunately, the bits and pieces of people. Was the temporary morgue, I wasn't aware there was a temporary morgue. Was that in the Pentagon? Was that it was actually in the Pentagon down, uh, down on 110, right along. So if you're looking at the Pentagon with the plane crash, it was to the left, a series of long buildings. And they had set up a temporary morgue. The FBI took care of that. And they were sorting through the body parts, classifying them and obviously shipping them off to the forensic lab for the armed forces. So it sounds like your day, for days nonstop after this, this, this was your job, was the aftermath of what happened? Yes, it was. How do, you, how do you begin to get through that, and how do you begin to get up every day to, to go back into the trauma? Well, I, I go back to my Marine Corps days. You know, I was trained to deal with adversity. And that's exactly what I did. 21 years of dealing with adversity in the Marine Corps, 
and this was just another day, just had to do it again. How important is it for us to continue to have remembrance ceremonies like these all these years later? It's extremely important. Uh, our nation has forgotten the things that have happened to us. And this is one of those things that we were attacked on our own soil absent of 1942 when the Japanese attacked us at Pearl Harbor. This, this might seem like an odd question, but is there a message, any message of hope after all of this, all these years later? Well, the only thing that I would say is that I would hope the diversity that we're seeing in our nation, that people would see that we're all the same and be able to get along without having differences between race, gender, ideologies, because this is the United States, and we're all Americans. And those differences are also minuscule in comparison to what you and thousands of Americans went through. I mean, it, it depends upon the individual. You know, what well, one person's tragedy is another person's every day. So to say that it's minuscule, probably not. But again, we all experience different things based upon our background. nothing and I'm very happy that you know I'm here with my fellow officers again some of which some of these young officers may not have been born by the time I left the police department but other than that no oh and actually I that kind of sparked one more question as you're um, going to watch the flags being lowered as you watch the wreath being laid what comes through your head it's a solemn moment and the people who died in the Pentagon need to be respected